This morning I took my shower using only the finest shampoo, Banditeers, Pro-V. Got dressed in a manner not unlike indecent exposure, prepared my bowl of trick cereal, grabbed my fork, and began eating, flipping on Animal Planet as I dined. As I watched a pelican swoop down to catch a fish in its crazy bill, I realized rather quickly that, instead of a fork, I should probably be using a spoon to eat my food, too. Then, thanks to the hyper-concentrated sugar content of trick cereal, I suddenly awoke, and a fascinating thought came to mind. What if my simple spoon had been designed based off of a pelican's beak? Or my bowl inspired by a seashell? Or my trick cereal by the psychotropic properties of mushrooms? As it turns out, I was not the first to receive this sugar-induced revelation. A multitude of scientists, engineers, and artists are infusing nature into their designs and achieving fantastic results. This movement, which editor-in-chief of McGraw-Hill Media, Robert Ivey, calls biomania, is growing. And the more we imitate nature's best ideas, the more advanced our civilization will become. The roots of biomania begin with a little-known aeronautical fact, and an even lesser-known Nick Selby fact. The Wright brothers' first airplane flew 90 years to the minute before I was born. My dad says this explains why I'm so flighty. The Christian Science Monitor of December 9th, 2003, reports that the brothers studied the flights of birds. They concluded that birds fly not because their wings are streamlined, but because they are not. See, birds' wings are curved, kind of like a slice of garlic bread, with one side flat and the other in a U shape. When air passes around our slice of garlic bread, an interesting phenomenon occurs known as Bernoulli's principle. Now, Mr. Bernoulli could probably explain why this happens far better than I could, but unfortunately he was unable to make it here today. He's dead, uh, so I'll try my best. Now because of the garlic bread shape, the air going over the top of the wing speeds up. This creates a pressure difference, which pushes our slice of buttery delight upward to fill in the gap. Thus, the wings rise and the plane flies. It really is the greatest thing since sliced meats. And the same dumb birds that fly into your car's grill came up with it before we did. Now that we understand how these technologies first took flight, we can take a look at how they build their way into our everyday lives. One such example, your house. Japanese publisher Shin Kenjiku claims to have developed a hyper-efficient architectural system derived from the cells of beeswax membranes. As opposed to our usual square-based architecture, the bees design, hexagonal forms, offers maximum structural capacity with minimal framework. To show this, I have constructed two Kinex rods of approximately equal length and refitted them into a square and a hexagon. As you can see, the hexagon has significantly more area than the square. And when that difference is multiplied by the thousands of honeycombs in structures like Shanghai's one and a half miles tall vertical city, millions of dollars are saved and simply by observing the home of a humble bumblebee. Well, honey, that's enough buzz about the recent growth of biomania. We really ought to be getting on to my final point. <coughs> Sorry, that last one really stung. Okay, the future of bionic, sorry, bionic technology. To solve the world's energy crisis, scientists are turning to the most basic units of life, cells, specifically those in a leaf. These cells are filled with microscopic gears called thylakoids. When light hits these thylakoids, they become excited and spin, generating energy for the plant. However, many of the gears' teeth are missing. Normally, this would waste a lot of energy, but instead, each tooth exists in every hole simultaneously, always finding the most energy efficient route around the gear. Think of it like this. There are probably about five or so possible routes back to your house from here. When you leave later this evening, you will be able to take one of those routes home. However, if you were as small as a thylakoid, you could simply make five clones of yourself never specifying exactly which clone is the real you until one of you arrives. So you always choose the quickest route. 
Now, if scientists can apply the LEAF strategy to solar panels, it could triple their energy efficiency, making solar energy more effective than gasoline and sending our world into a new age where saving money could save the planet. Now, if you take nothing else away from these few minutes, I implore you to at least leave the room with a newfound respect for nature. Our world and the models we use to describe it are not an exotic incarnation to be used as a resource. Rather, science exists all around us. Society needs science because science evolves us, and the world which inspires us to better ourselves demands our respect. Now let us make our relationship with our planet a mutually beneficial one.